Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is Monday. We're back with Superfilm Support. Do remember you can send your emails to superfilmsupport.com. Reach out to me and I'll answer you on a video. So today we have a question by Cesar who wrote me asking me about different lenses from different systems on different systems. So basically uh, he has Minolta cameras and Pentax glass and he wants to merge them. And this uh, he said he could not find information. And basically, this is a very common thing happening nowadays with mirrorless cameras, but it's been done uh, before for many, many years. So basically, what you are using is maybe a lens that has a Pentax K mount and you want to use it on your Sony mirrorless, or you have a Canon EF mount lens and you want to use it on your Canon FD uh, camera and so on. There's many examples. I have a Pentax 645 here, which also is used many times with Pentax 6x7 glass. So this all translates to one basic uh, concept, which is flange distance. And what is flange distance? Flange distance is the distance between where your lens mounts or where the, usually that metallic ring is and where your sensor or film is so on this pentax 645 it would be from this ring to basically where the film back is which it probably is somewhere around there there's probably an indicator for the film plane which i can't find which is interesting i would think you would find it somewhere on the pentax but it doesn't seem to have an indicator for the film plane nope no indicator for the film plane, but a lot of cameras have that symbol. I can show you on the uh, the Canon, but it has a little symbol for the film plane. So that distance usually is, for example, 44.5 millimeters on a SLR camera. But when you go to a mirrorless camera, maybe it's like 19 millimeters. So it's very simple. If you are using a lens from a system that has a longer flange distance than the camera you are trying to use, you can use it usually in most cases. So if it's a, a system that had a longer flange distance towards mounting on a smaller, you need an adapter that will be a spacer. It will basically act as a spacer. That's all it does. Some of them have electronic controls, so you can use maybe aperture control like the EF, which is electronically controlled. So you have to like use a little dial so you can open and close or maybe it has some sort of locking mechanism like the Canon FD that has that special pin, which is like to open and shut the aperture and so on. So usually they can be dummy controls uh, and sometimes they are, have certain adapters that help control the aperture or the aperture, uh, you know, shooting and whatnot. So a step down and whatnot. So that can be done. So if you're using a lens from a bigger flange distance to a body with a shorter flange distance, it's an easy adapter. Some adapters are a little more hardcore, like uh, for example, I think there's the Kiev mount that has to have like the inner helical and whatnot, very expensive adapters. Some are very inexpensive because they're basically dummies. Do remember that the adapters, the better they are, the less tolerances they'll have. So they'll be like snug and nice and not just wobbly and a mess. Also, usually they miss at infinity focus and things like that if they're very cheap or bad quality adapters. But then there's the case of if you want to mount a lens that has a longer flange distance for the normal bodies than or shorter, sorry, than the body you're going to mount. And this is a very normal case for mounting Canon FD glass on Canon EF cameras. And for example, FD glass, there's the 85 uh, 1.2, there's the 50 1.2, which are beautiful glass, which a lot of people want to mount on Canon EF video cameras, like the one I'm using right now, Canon uh, C300, uh, 100, sorry. And what happens is the distance is not like it's too long for the lens to mount properly and focus at infinity. So what you have to do is use is an adapter with a glass element. If it's too big, it's impossible and you can actually physically mount it. So like if I put this Canon EF glass on this Pentax 645, as it's much bigger body and the flame distance is much bigger, what this will lens will do is it won't focus at infinity. It'll be like a macro lens suddenly because I'm spacing out the lens. But some of the systems do have the option to use an adapter with a piece of glass, which will basically help you achieve infinity focus. That happens between, as I said, the Canon 
FD lenses mounted onto Canon uh, EOS EF mount. So you have to use that piece of glass. If not, you won't be able to achieve infinity focus. If you want to focus only on something close up or portraiture, maybe you can get around with certain systems mixing around, but do remember that that is what's going to happen. So that's why sometimes when you're looking for uh, a Pentax 645 lens to mount on a Pentax 6x7, you probably won't find an adapter because it won't focus at infinity at all by a lot. So you would basically be doing macro photography, but the other way around you can. You can actually buy the official Pentax uh, 645 adapter that will let you use 6x7 glass. So that's a favorite combo of a lot of people use the 105 f 2.4 on this camera, but you do need that spacer basically to counter for the bigger flange distance of the Pentax 6x7 glass. So yeah, basically I highly recommend uh, Thesar. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link to flange distance uh, focal distance and there's a whole list of all the camera manufacturers of lenses and bodies and the good thing is if you're going from a longer uh, flange distance lens to a shorter flange distance body it most probably can be done uh, for example Nikon lenses can be adapted to Canon EF mount uh, but the other way around it's kind of complicated you need that little glass element it's like a meta bone speed booster kind of looking thing okay just so you get your hand a head around and that quality of that glass is very important because it's basically helping achieve that infinity focus so some adapters can be really bad some adapters are okay but none no adapters i found have been stellar when they have that glass element uh, better to find something that can mount without having to add glass so yeah, that's basically what you need to know about flange distance and how you can adapt certain lenses to certain cameras. As I said, the biggest use nowadays is mirrorless photography. Uh, you have, for example, the Sony cameras that basically democratize the like adapter world. Now you have the Canon RF mount, you have the Nikon Z mount, and these are all very short uh, like flange distance, so you can mount almost every lens around. So that's why vintage glass is getting heftier priced nowadays because a lot of people are using them to shoot on these new mirrorless cameras. So yeah, you can use pretty much anything on a Sony, Canon RF or uh, Nikon. You do need an adapter. Like Leica glass is stunning. I've done it on Sony. I've used Pentax K on Sony's and stuff like that. So yeah, mounting stuff is possible. Sometimes adapters are rare because they're very rare. Uh, camera brand uh, and there's not a lot of glass and maybe nobody's done it but nowadays with adapters made in China by a lot of companies they're pretty much everything also large format can also be used and just remember the longer you go from where the flange distance is it'll become a macro lens and if the shorter you go you'll need a spacer adapter okay I hope that answered your question I know it might sound like a silly question to a lot of people but flange distance is very important and sometimes overseen uh, I've done it before and I think it's important because it's very cool that you can adapt old glass to new cameras and maybe you can use your EF uh, glass on RF cameras like I do and so on you don't have to buy the latest and greatest uh, camera lens that has like a shorter and that's why I try not to buy, for example, RF glass because it won't work on my cinema cameras. It won't work on my film cameras. I only buy EF glass, which can work on my film cameras, which is what I use for photography and cinema. I use Canon cinema cameras with EF mount right now. So yeah, that's Superfilm support for this week. As always, do remember this Superfilm support works thanks to Patreons and donors. I'll leave the links to that below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.